Hello and welcome everyone to another one of my Cubase versus Bitwig videos in which I observe these two doors in regard to a specific perspective. Today's perspective is going to be MIDI routing because I think that this is a topic where these two doors differ largely from each other and one of the doors could learn a lot from the other door but I don't want to spoil you too early. You will have to experience it yourself by watching me accomplishing some simple tasks now. The first thing is I wanna add a synthesizer, in this case Synth1. And I give it some notes. Great. Now next up I might wanna add a comp filter, like Rift Feedback Light, cause I like the sound of comp filters. <laughs> As you can see, you can change the pitch of the comp filter with the frequency knob. However, it also has MIDI input in order to key track the comp filter with the notes. It doesn't pick up the notes that are given to the synthesizer though. So in order to send these notes to the MIDI plugin, we need MIDI sense. However, we cannot find any MIDI sense on this track. And the reason for that is because this is an instrument track and for some reason instrument tracks don't have MIDI sense. So we have to drag the MIDI onto a MIDI track. Now as you can see there are MIDI sends and if we go there we can activate them. So I can take one of the MIDI sends and use it to send the MIDI to the synthesizer and I can take the second send and use it to send to the comp filter. And now I can use this parameter just as a pitch offset, for example two octaves higher. Okay, sweet. Now let's say I want to use Polyverse Supermodel in parallel, because that's something that I often like to do. In order to make anything parallel in Cubase, you have to use group tracks. So let's make two groups and let's just call them Sin Supermodel 1, Sin Supermodel 2. And on each of these tracks, we make an instance of Supermodel. I already have my default preset set up to work with MIDI inputs, so I don't have to do anything else. I can just copy this instance to the second group of Supermodel. And now on my Synth 1 track, in Instead of using the stereo out, I can use the send track in order to send it to the two individual group tracks. And now I hear the signal twice. And I can open the second instance of Supermodel and maybe change like the pitch or anything. Okay, cool. Now I got quite a glassy sound, which is something that I often like. And now I might want to add effects on the group of the two, which as the name suggests, requires another group track. So here we have synth supermodel group. And now I have to send the output to the group from these tracks. Now here I can add effects that should belong to everything together. For example, OTT. But wait, the supermodel instances don't even get the right MIDI notes yet. So let's go back to the MIDI track and use two more sends for that. Now that's more like it, right? So we also have a break in here. And now let's say I want to have a filter on the break as well. Maybe also supermodel and now I need to get the MIDI there but unfortunately I already maxed out all of my available MIDI channels. There are basically two options. Option one is I use the MIDI output from the MIDI track itself so not the sense but direct MIDI out um, and option two is I make another MIDI track just in case that I need even more MIDI outputs from this MIDI track and now this is like MIDI 2 and I say okay this thing should go to 
MIDI 2. Oh, apparently that doesn't work, but maybe I can select the output from MIDI 1 here. No, but I can select the output from Rift Feedback Lite because apparently Rift Feedback Lite also produces MIDI. I mean, that would be a solution now that would kind of work, I guess, but it's not what I had in mind. So what I had in mind apparently isn't a thing. It doesn't work. So you cannot have more than five MIDI outputs from one MIDI track. Okay, then let's just use this output here to route to supermodel break. Nice. Alright, so that was MIDI routing in Cubase. Let's try the same thing in Bitwig, shall we? So here in Bitwig, we just wanna instantiate another synthesizer like Synth1. Also draw some notes. Great. Now about the comp filter. Let's just add it to the signal chain directly. And as you can see, it immediately picks up the same MIDI notes that are on this track. Because when there are MIDI notes on an instrument track, then you don't have to send them. They are just being passed on to each effect in the chain until something about the MIDI buffer changes. Before I go on, I want to say a little word about that because usually that's a pretty comfortable workflow but there was exactly one moment in my life where this was confusing which was when I instantiated the fab filter plugins that I bought because by default enable MIDI is ticked and that results in this. You might be wondering what's going on here. I can tell you. When enable MIDI is ticked, then this compressor interprets a sustained MIDI note as maximally pumping down the volume of the audio signal. And yeah, if you don't know that, then you might think that this plugin is just super buggy in Bitwig. But what you actually have to do is just to disable this feature and save this as your default preset. Now let's go on about this layer. In Bitwig, we can just make a container track called FX layer. And in the upper container, I put supermodel. And then I copy this layer and in this copied layer I just change the settings. Sweet. And now after the FX layer I can instantiate OTT directly. As you can see, we are still on just a single track in Bitwig because there is no need for a group track if we don't try to group things. I'm not saying that group tracks are bad in general, but in Cubase they are just largely overused for way too many things. Also notice that we didn't need another track for routing MIDI somewhere else. It could all be done within this track. However, I also want to show you an example of a moment where you actually have to route MIDI and how that would work in Bitwig, because that's also very interesting in regard to Cubase. Okay, nice, we got a little break in here. And now, just like I did in Cubase, I want to add an instance of Supermodel. Okay, sweet. Now you might be wondering, how do you get the MIDI to pop up on this track? And all you have to do here in Bitwig is to go in front of the effect that should pick up the MIDI and add a so-called note receiver. So in Cubase, you usually have to work with sends. You send things somewhere else. And here in Bitwig, you receive things from somewhere else. So here you can select whatever you want to receive from. And of course, you can also give this a more specific name to make it a little bit easier to find things. So now you can immediately see, okay, I want the MIDI from the lead or even the MIDI coming out of Rift Feedback Lite. But for me, I just want to have the MIDI from the lead. 
sweet. Alright, so as you can see, you could do this a million times more. You are never running out of available sends or anything like that. Because there are no sends, there are only receives. So you never have to really think about this. And that actually enables you to be much more spontaneous about these kind of things. Bitwig users already know all of the things that I'm talking about right now. But my main goal of making this video is especially to show to Cubase users that it's not a subjective opinion if the MIDI routing is better in Cubase or in Bitwig. I mean, how is it subjective? when it's just so much easier. That's almost like saying, hey, in order to route MIDI in Cubase, you have to travel to the end of the world with a plane, and then you have to press a button there on some building, and then you have to travel back home, and then you can use your MIDI routing. Of course, that's a little bit of an exaggerated example, but it's basically the same thing, when you just have to make way more steps and a lot of steps that don't have a good reason for being there, then that's not subjective that's objectively worse. One of the things that I have in mind when making these videos is I would like to make an appeal at Steinberg to improve their door. I mean, you don't have to copy the entire layout of Bitwig, especially this whole horizontal effect chain thing. You already have your vertical effect chain and I don't think you want to redesign the entire door just to enable some workflows that work better in a different door. But maybe you can still take inspiration from Bitwig here and there and and just make sure that we don't need a million tracks in Cubase to make some simple MIDI routing. I'm pretty sure there must be a way to accomplish that and you know that as well. So please, just do it. If you just went into this video for my comparison of MIDI features, then you can already leave. But if you wanna know some extra information about a feature that I wanna talk about in this context as well, then you can stay, which is the freeze feature. Bitwig doesn't have freeze, so this is like not part of the comparison between Bitwig and Cubase anymore. However, Cubase does have freeze and that's why I would like to talk about that real quickly. For example, if you have MIDI on a track, like here on Synth1, you can hit freeze and it will freeze the instrument and the effects on the instrument. Now this instrument and its effects don't waste CPU anymore and you can just play it back. That's very useful, especially in bigger projects and especially for people who don't have an upgraded computer like me. I personally don't need it a lot anymore, but one of the major reasons why I bought this computer, of course, was because I was switching to Bitwig and you can't expect everyone to do that. So the freeze feature is incredibly important for Cubase because it makes sure that Cubase has a user base of lots of people who cannot always afford to get to the latest hardware. However, you can already see a little bit of a problem here. For example, I had to drag the MIDI over to this track in order to make it freezeable, but that means that this MIDI could not be used to be fed into all of these instances of Rift Feedback Light and Supermodal anymore. So let's drag it back. Now I cannot use the freeze feature anymore and I can tell you why. It is because I am using a send to go into the synthesizer. If I instead used the main output and used the send for that instance of supermodal on the break, then I could freeze this track again. Let's play it back. So this works, now we got our MIDI routing still working fine. However, if we imagine we now had multiple synthesizers that try to use the same notes in a layered way, then we could only freeze one of them or we would have to copy the MIDI notes manually, which of course goes against the idea of making things work automatically. Also, if we look down here in the mixer, we can see that it didn't freeze the groups, even though this is basically just one large effect chain as we have seen in Bitwig. So I think Steinberg should really work out their freeze feature to be even better than it already is. So when you are hitting freeze on an instrument track, then it should detect which groups it goes to and also freeze those groups so that it would involve all of these three groups and its effects. Now let's try to also freeze the break. 
freezing the break worked, so we got rid of another instance of supermodel from the CPU. Let's unfreeze the instrument track again. And for some reason that also unfroze the MIDI. Even though this is the same source MIDI that influences the break. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Because now since the break is still frozen, we still got the last melody on the break, but we got a new melody on the synth. So now if we unfreeze the break again, it will do something else than what it sounded like before. And that goes kinda against the idea of freezing. The core concept of freezing, the very reason why freezing is better than just bounces in order to save CPUs, to make the user feel safe, that they can get back to the sound that they had the last time before they froze the track. And that's just not a thing anymore. Let's freeze the track, the break again, because I want to highlight another problem here. Now that I've frozen the break, it has automatically detected that some MIDI that goes into supermodel comes from this MIDI track. So it has also frozen this MIDI track, which makes a lot of sense and I appreciate that. But for some reason it did not detect that this MIDI track also sends to Synth1. So this instance of Synth1 is not frozen, even though this MIDI is frozen. So you could change what the synthesizer is doing and for that reason what the overall sound is doing, even though its source MIDI is frozen. I would appreciate a really good freeze feature to always detect where things are coming from and where things are going and take all of that into account, including all sidechains of all of the plugins, MIDI inputs, audio inputs, whatever and just freeze everything that is involved. Just to make it sure that the freeze feature is really doing what you would expect it to do. If Cubase made sure that this is a thing, then I think this would level up the MIDI workflows of this door as well again. Cause at the moment we have this issue that MIDI workflows in general are very complicated and discouraging because they use a lot of tracks. But on top of that, it's also discouraging because it lets you not really utilize the freeze feature well anymore. So that forces people to instead copy around MIDI manually, which is very error prone because you might end up changing the MIDI somewhere, but not changing it somewhere else accidentally. It happened a lot to me in the past. So I'm, I just know that it's a thing and um, yeah, that's not very cool. I don't want to be mean or anything, but Steinberg, really, I, I still love this door. Please work on it. Please don't accept that your workflows are so old. Do something about it. You can do it.